So here we are. We are in this mock-up basement I created with the rocket mass stove. Uh, before we get started uh, explaining another component today, I want to give a quick shout out to Julie over at Dirt Patch Heaven. She is just absolutely an incredible gal and has done a lot to help Mrs. Honeydew and I out. Uh, experimenting with different projects in her cabin and whatnot. There was a time when I was just kind of floundering. Uh, I would do all kinds of different projects for people on a handyman basis. I knew I had some talents that I wanted to try and monetize and every day I would just play out different scenarios in my mind and try and figure out what direction I wanted to go in. And one day, a friend of my wife came over, Julie. She had a book, and it was a book on rocket mass heaters written by Erica and Ernie Wisner. She told me it was the Bible of rocket mass heaters, and she asked me if I would look at the book and consider building her one for her tiny home, her cat. And because of that, I got excited about uh, rocket mass heaters and the technology, and because of that, I started doing a lot of research and ultimately what I found guys is there's a lot of misconceptions out there about what rocket stoves are what rocket mass heaters are why they're so efficient how they work how they're built you know what their strengths are what their weaknesses are I just found there was a lot of misconceptions out there but take a look at this clip this is like almost a year and a half ago I hadn't built anything yet Julie had just asked me to build it and I had just read a little bit of this book. I'm building a rocket mass heater for a friend and uh, it's for her tiny house, her little cabin. And I think it's gonna be a really cool project. Uh, some of the materials that you're gonna need for it, uh, according to this book and different plans that I've seen is like a 55 gallon drum barrel and I just looked at some of them and I mean they're great and I love the concept and I want to do it but I just want to make it look a little classier. My whole goal from the very beginning of this has always been to take rocket mass heating technology from obscurity you know from a very small niche market to Main Street you know to create something that is appealing to the masses, to regular homeowners, to people who maybe just for prepper reasons, in case the electricity goes out, they have a way to heat their home. For people that want to uh, live off grid, or for people who just want to have a way to augment their current way that they're heating their home and save some money. And I think with this system that I've got going on right here, I'm heading toward that goal. That being said, I want to look at the viewer's comment that kind of prompted me to choose the next item to look at. And here it is. Uh, Michael Glenning, he said, it looks really good. I like the materials in the burn box, etc. I was hoping that your design or your concept was adaptable to the $50 barrel stove kit, leg door, rice collar, etc and it appears to be exclamation point. The air creek can be poured into the barrel around the burn box that you have spec. And you know what? Michael Glenning is exactly right. Earlier I talked about barrels and piles of mud and running your pipe through it and whatnot. And I'm here to tell you guys that's not a slight against anybody's design. The pioneers in this uh, whole industry of rocket mass heaters are absolutely my heroes. Let's just go into it. I got to go into it where I can click on it. I can click on it and then I'm going to pull it out of there. I'll just pull it out about three feet and then we'll take a look at the core. Let's take a quick look at this thing and what makes it so special. One of the things I ultimately found in my research as well was People would try and build these out of steel, their uh, burn chambers, their heat risers. You get them over 1600 degrees, cool them and heat them and cool them and heat them and they start to spall and they get plenty hot in there with insulation around them that they would melt. I solved that problem in Julie's system with the uh, Aircrete heat riser. I'm just taking it to the next level here with some NASA technology with alumina cement ceramic fiber core impregnated tiles bonded together 
in a certain configuration of a burn chamber. Now if you look at this heat chamber, what makes it kind of special too is it has an auxiliary air intake that goes up into the vortex area that would sit here and would create additional burn of any unburnt gases that uh, gassed off of your fuel. That extra oxygen that's going to be sucked into this tube and go up created by the negative pressure from the heat wanting to rush up the riser is going to be preheated and it'll just be ready to ignite and flash any additional gases that made it through there instantly. And so I think it's an absolute winner. That being said, this box will go into any system. In fact, I'm going to offer the, them in tiles in the shape of a J-tube for 4 inch, 6 inch, 8 inch systems. Uh, it doesn't matter. Whatever people want, um, I am going to offer these in those. Okay guys, here we are. The clink. He said, I thought I'd ask this separately. Would aluminum be cheaper and still be almost as good? Also, if the stovepipe uh, sucks too hard, sucking the flames off of the wood, uh, could a valve be fitted in there to throttle the exhaust a bit, or does the air intake of the front of the box take care of that? Take a look at this, uh, this little clip from the first uh, rocket stove after I installed the Aircrete uh, double-walled stovepipe the mass bench into the rocket stove. Now, we've been running it without the mass bench and the only problem we have is it just sucks too hard. It about sucks the flame off. So, running it through this bench I think is going to be a good thing. It's going to allow us to slow it down a little bit. And uh, But this hot air vacuum I've got going on back here is awesome. And that's my insulated stove pipe. It is literally a hot air vacuum. It pulls so hard, it's incredible. It pulled coals across the bottom of my stove. I didn't bump the coals. The coals just started moving towards the jake. Whoa! Look at I've it. never so seen it in the flesh when, when your little fire starters go off. Look at it suck. Dang, that was fast. Okay, I'm going to turn it Hear off. Hear it? Hey, I want to get that noise. Okay. Listen. We are done out here at Dirt Patch Heaven. The valve for the mass bench is installed. Everything is running as it should and as I imagined it would, except better. I couldn't have imagined it would work as good as it works. There's so many people when they look at my videos and I show them what I'm doing, they said it will never work. Well, to them I say, bull it works awesome. Okay guys, I just wanted to show you that just to kind of give you guys a sense of how well the double wall stovepipe works. And uh, this whole next talk will kind of feed into that um, idea as well. So he asked about using aluminum instead of copper here. Now he said almost as good. Yeah, co aluminum is a good uh, thermal conductor. Uh, not quite as good as copper, but it's still good. However, um, there's something called electrolysis and there's something called dissimilar metals. Now, the stovepipe right here is a dissimilar metal, meaning the ions are so far apart and different that the aluminum will immediately start to corrode. Uh, I worked at a geotech engineering firm for many years. For several of those years I ran a soils lab. We did all kinds of different uh, tests. I mean we would we would test aggregate for its hardness and also for its mineral makeup and whatnot to see how corrosive it might be, its acidity, its pH balance 
and how well we thought it would work in a concrete situation. And that's where I learned a lot about this thing called electrolysis and corrosiveness. Another gentleman asked about using uh, salt as a heat battery, but also I think we can all guess that it's very corrosive and acidic as well. So I think when you look at copper, it has some very specific elemental properties to it. You can take a copper sheeting, bend it into a roofing panel, stick it directly on a roof, no paint, no UV protection, nothing and it will begin to corrode and it turns a nice kind of a greenish uh, dark rusty color uh, it's it's beautiful um, but it immediately gets a small film of that corrosion on it and seals itself and will last for years and years and years and so that's why I chose copper guys so before we go any further and talking about the aircrete in the bench, let's look at another comment real quick. Okay, Leon Cripp has a really good uh, comment here. Thermal mass. You should avoid aircrete as it's an insulator. It is extremely poor in storing heat, i.e. it's a very good heat insulator. I think pea gravel is slightly better than aircrete as it has more mass but is still too much of an air gap. Air is a poor heat transfer from pipe to mass. Just use the traditional method of thermal mass cob, clay, sand, straw. It's extremely cheap, no air gap barrier, easy to take apart if needed, or normal concrete is also good thermal mass. It's more expensive but quick to produce. Both cob and concrete is very heavy though. Limited air gap. This is what makes it good a good thermal mass heat sink. Now, th there is something to that. Because if this were just solid, normal concrete, and I mean, at 150 pounds a square foot, oh my gosh, you can imagine how much this thing would weigh. It would weigh thousands of pounds. But it would take, you'd have to run that stove so many hours to heat up that whole block of concrete that it wouldn't, be efficient. That's why cob actually works. You actually need a little bit of insulation and air gap and that thermodynamic in there and that's why cob works uh, uh, the way it does because it has the straw. In. Just stay tuned and understand that you can just change the density of air creep by changing the amount of air you put in it. You can also suspend finely uh, fine sands in it just fine and you can uh, create a different thermal dynamic you know I have a uh, background in um, cements and geology and concrete and aggregates and stuff like that and so I think there's a huge misconception as well about aircrete people think of it like fiberglass insulation like it's some kind of just a dam uh, filled with air but it is made of a stone of limestone that is kiln heated into a clinker and then ground into Portland cement preparing it to go through another phase of being wetted and turned back into a rock without any solid air gaps in the aircrete situation it makes a great slow release situation if you can get the heat to it and get it heated up and I think I've come a long way in solving that as well but the more dense it is, the more energy it takes to heat it up. So, um, you know, if you had a really tiny home, you could have a fairly aerated mix. It would do just fine that way. So, anyways. Hey, guys. I want to address one more comment before I go today. PGFFEMT5895. It was just a simple comment. So, you invented the rocket mass heater? Question mark, question mark. <laughs> And I'm here to say, God, no, I didn't invent the rocket mass heater. Um, here, I want, I, I, I'm going to play this quick clip real quick for you guys. Book is a book that Julie originally gave me. It's kind of the Bible on rocket mass heaters. And this is where I got pretty much all of my inspiration from. I kind of combined a bunch of different features from a bunch of different types of uh, rocket mass heaters. 
This book is written by Erica and Ernie Wisner, and they're absolutely incredible people. You can tell they put a ton of thought into this, and they resourced information from all the right people. Um, a lot of the inspiration I got from in here was the batch box system that was put together by Peter Vandenberg, and I just thought that was uh, absolutely incredible. And uh, I know that uh, Paul Wheaton had a huge inspiration on a lot of this stuff too. But I just kind of, I just wanted you guys to know where I got my inspiration from. Miss the spot. I did, did I? Where? I just know you did. <laughs> I would say it was just like I envisioned it, but it it's kind of like a sculpture. <laughs> uh -huh. You kind of build it as you go, and you're like, what would look good for this? What would look good for that after you already got started? It's my theory. If you wait until you know exactly how you're going to do something, you'll never get started doing it. We just got back from Julie's over at Dirt Patch Heaven where we had installed the rocket mass heater. We ran it for a week in its conventional form running straight up out of the downdraft with the mass ring around it and it worked great. We attempted to run it through a bench and that's where things kind of went awry a little bit. I wouldn't say awry, we just have some things that we have to tweak about it to get it to draw right. If we're gonna... It sits kind of high off the ground and we have to downdraft it a little bit far. I'm just going to have to do a little bit of tweaking and get the math right. Hey guys, <clears throat> I didn't invent the rocket mass heater, but I'll tell you this much. In my research, what I found is it still had a lot of weak points. And I'm just attempting to solve those and speak to all the right people and go to all the right places and do all the right things to get that done. I was able to visit Wheaton Labs and speak with Paul Wheaton. Uh, Paul um, doesn't do a lot of the innovating himself, but he is a big promoter of it. And kudos on him for doing that and promoting this this stuff. But, and you know, this is not my words. This, this is his words. He said that Peter Vandenberg's systems that he's come up and built in his cabins are notorious for him being the only one that can operate them. That Peter is the only one that can make them work. And... You know, I just thought that there was a gap in the market. There was a place where if you could come up with a user-friendly system that worked, it would be fantastic. We will talk again about some more stuff. Keep the comments coming. Be sure and like, subscribe. If you want to find out how to get a foam mate to participate in these Aircrete projects, be sure and check out our Etsy store. I'm going to go a little bit deeper in this stove, and we're going to answer some more questions about the vortex area, the whole movement, and the whole flow, and what makes it flow so smoothly. Stay tuned, and I will check you guys later. Thanks.